All right, guys, I just finished installing this swing case and I wanted to demo it for you so you can uh, pull the handle. It swings right out. If you haven't seen one of these things, a super convenient way to have some tool storage. So standing outside your truck, you can just walk up, reach in, grab tools, whatever it is that you have, and uh, swing it back. Locks into place. So it is super cool. I just picked it up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But you can see I have a cover that easily rolls down and does not interfere with this at all. Of course, you can close the tailgate. That's super freaking heavy on this Ford F-350. And uh, there you have it. This is the passenger side one. They have one for the driver's side as well. Uh, identical thing. I just wanted to get one of them first, check it out, make sure I liked it and that it worked well. And um, yeah, I haven't actually used it yet, but just after installing it, it took about 30 minutes and it's fantastic. So I want to show you the easy way to install it on my 2012 F350. All right, here are the provided installation instructions, all of the parts that come with it and the tools you're gonna need. So for my application, I'm gonna need an eight, a 10 and an 11 millimeter socket. I've got a drill for these self tapping or self drilling screws and a ratchet just in case to help me out. So I have a 2012 Ford F350 Super Duty and mine comes with a hole right here so if that is the case on yours some models have this and you're going to need to remove the tail light with two eight millimeter bolts here so that we can put a uh, washer and nut on the back of it because normally if you don't have this you're just drilling right in as that's one of the attachment points also we're going to have to remove the stock tie down and that is two 10 millimeter bolts back there to remove that the very first step is we are going to attach this to this piece and it just takes uh, two nuts to attach them. Now for me, mine came shipped with these little, uh, I guess they're plastic things on there to cover the threads, probably to protect them in shipping, but they were on super tight. So I just had to use some pliers to grip them and then we're just gonna unscrew those. And then this fits right into uh, this bracket and we're gonna use two of the supplied nuts to attach it but you want to make sure that the uh, larger end is facing up if you have it like this, because this is the orientation it's going to go into your truck. And just like the self-tapping bolts, the uh, nuts here are also nine millimeter. All right, so with our bracket assembled, you can just uh, drop the case right on here and you can see how this is gonna work. So once this is attached to the car, this will slide in. And let me lift this up so you can see that this bar on the back of the case goes right through there. So yeah, right through there. So you can see to release it, you just pull on this yellow handle. And when you do, it pulls this bar back through here and that springs open. So you can see in their picture, the second step is you're going to attach that bracket we just assembled to the bed of your trunk. So it's gonna go this way with this little thing sticking out and you actually just put it all the way against the floor of the truck bed all the way tight up against the corner so you can see that that tie down is going to be in the way of the case operating so that's why we have to remove that first so we'll go ahead and pull that off so for mine somebody had a spray on bed liner so i have to uh, pull that off the bolt that they just covered it with and now it's a 10 millimeter this thing is really but there is bed liner spray all over this thing so it is like glued in. All right. That might be the hardest part of this job. Now, I don't know why, but the one down here for me is a 13 millimeter. So let me get that off. I don't think that the heads of the bolts will interfere with the operation. I think it was just the tie down itself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover up the holes by reinstalling these bolts. And I will tell you right now, after I do this, if that was a good idea or not. Yep, not a problem. Work great. You can go ahead and do that if you'd like. All right, now to figure out if your model is going to require you to remove this taillight. So if you hold this up against the corner and let it rest all the way on the ground. This bottom hole right here, if right behind it is this hole, 
then you can't drill into it and you're going to need to go behind it. So in my case, the next step is to remove this tail light. If that hole is not there for yours, you can skip to the next step. It's going to remove these two eight millimeter bolts. And the washer. So there's one, two, Right now the tail light assembly just comes off. There's two little uh, pegs here that are holding it in. Just lay it off to the side. As in this spot, we're gonna use uh, one of these washers. So we're gonna go through the front and this washer is gonna be back behind the hole and we're gonna put a bolt on it like that. So we're gonna start with the bottom hole. Stick it through this hole, reach back in here. All right, for mine, the bolt doesn't stick through there far enough to get the washer on the back because this thing has prongs. It's like a little grommet. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just pop this thing off altogether. But again, mine has been uh, truck bed sprayed in. So I'm just gonna get a screwdriver and pry that thing off. Right, get that uh, grommet here out of the way because these prongs on the back are preventing that washer. Okay, let's try this again. We'll hold our bracket here. Stick our th screw through here. Reach back through the taillight opening. Put the washer and the nut on. And just tighten this up. That's really nice. The nut just stays in place for you back there. Make sure that's all the way firm against there. And then we got uh, the other ones we need to drill in. So with these self-tapping guys, it should be as easy as just uh, screwing them in. So I'm gonna start here. All right, there it goes. And got in. Finish. Just gonna finish it with a ratchet here. All right, and then just knock out the other ones and then don't forget to, uh, of course, stick the tail light back in. So once you have those on, then there's just two more for the arm right here. All right, those are actually thinner metal, so it goes in much easier. All right, so like I showed you earlier, it's as easy as just dropping these two on the two hooks. Swing it shut. All right, that was the first time I've ever closed it. Works perfectly, nice and sturdy. Out of the way, you can see I have a uh, topper on mine. Fits well under the topper. And if you're ever up here in the tailgate working or hanging out, it's even got two cup holders built in. Pretty cool. It's got a little uh, locking thing so people can't get into it. A little uh, waterproof cover for the key there. So you can lock and unlock it. And again, just to open it, hold the tab, and it swings right out. This is what the storage looks like on the inside. Really deep here, of course. It's got a removable little tray. So you can keep small parts up here, and then there's another bin here that's blocked off so you can keep uh, some parts separated from the, the big stuff. Pretty cool. All right, so it's too easy to remove, you say. Somebody could just come in your truck and steal it. Well, it comes with this cool little thing. So uh, you can see on the back of it, it's got a little groove that fits into this little channel right here. All right, so it's got this little uh, gap right here where you put the piece in, but you can fill that gap and lock it with this little thing. You just tuck it in there, slide it over, and with the key, if you turn it, that locks that piece into that channel so you can't remove this piece. And with this piece in here, it blocks it from lifting it up and removing it. So now the case is not only lockable from the top so you can't open it, but it's lockable from the side with the same key so you can't remove this thing. And uh, a really cool part, while it does lock it from taking it out, it does not prevent you from swinging it out. So you can leave this thing on all the time and not have to worry about it unless for whatever reason you really want to remove this. 
Also, if you want to prevent it from swinging out for whatever reason, you can also put a padlock or anything right here that's even uh, more secure from having this thing be stolen. So, plenty of options. And they even mention that option here in the instructions.